Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, it's about <clears throat> creeping up on 345 in the morning. I'll show you. See the top of my screen? 344. And I'm awake and I don't know why. <laughs> so we're going to do morning devotion early. And we'll do um, Hosea early. Get him there and get him ready to upload. I want to thank everybody in advance for your prayers for my buddy that's in the ICU. I didn't know he had been taken to the hospital. Um, communication is really weird out here right now. But I um, wasn't able to get a hold of him. Um, they said he had his cell phone with him. We could call that. But um, he never responded, so I'm guessing he was asleep. I don't know where this one's going to go. But like I said in the community tab post, I think he needs healing in his heart and healing in his spirit instead of his body. Um, the, the body will be dealt with later. Uh, but I think there's more important things going on with him than physical ailments. So if you guys would uh, pray for that, pray for the Lord gets in his heart and heals him. Uh, he's very aware of the Bible. He knows about it. He's grown up around the scriptures he seems to attain to it um, how much he knows of it he doesn't he doesn't know that much about it but it's always there so my prayer is that, that the, is that the Lord will get in his heart wake him up this will be a good wake-up call for him because he does have an issue with alcohol he has an issue with perversions and stuff like that so my hope is that the Lord will bring him out of that stuff. We'll see. We will see. We'll hold out hope. So this morning, and, and the things that he has going on are not specific to him. But many, many men have these issues. And even women nowadays. So let's hope the Lord brings him out of it. So this morning, we're going to be reading out of Judges 7.20, The Sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Let's go there. So it's a big verse. The whole verse is, Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pictures. They held the torches in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right hands for blowing, and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So let's... Two, three, four, five. Let's go up here. Verse 15. And so it was, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp <clears throat> of Midian into your hand. Then he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. And he said to them, Look at me and do likewise. Watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me then you also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Gideon defeats Midian. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just as they had posted the watch. And they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers. They held they held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands for blowing. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Every man stood in his place all around the camp, and the whole army ran and cried out and fled. When the three hundred blew the trumpet, the Lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp, and the army fled to Beth Acacia toward Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Mehola by Tabith. And the men of Israel gathered from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh, and pursued the Midianites. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout all the mountains of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and seize them, or seize from them the watering places as far as beth Bera and the Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered together and seized the watering places as far as beth Bera and the Jordan. All right, so there's a battle going on. There was an overtaking going on. 
and Judges has got actually got a lot of very complicated stories in it about some of the things. It was the establishment of the Jewish people in their land, and them estab being established as the Lord's people. A lot went on. There's a lot of history to Israel. The part we're going to focus on in that verse is the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Gideon ordered his men to do two things. Covering up a torch in an earthen pitcher, he bade them, at an appointed signal, break the pitcher and let the light shine, and then sound with the trumpet crying, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. This is precisely what all Christians must do. First, you must shine. Break the pitcher which conceals your light, throw aside the bushel which has been hiding your candle, and shine. What have I been telling you guys? Same thing. Same thing. In fact, we, we talked about it in a video for, for pretty recently. Let your light shine before men. Let your good works be such that when men look upon you, they shall know that you have been with Jesus. People need to be able to look at you and tell that you're different. How will they know that? By your behavior. By your actions. Excuse me. By your actions. Your salvation, who you are being born again, is going to manifest externally. Then there must be the sound, the blowing of a trumpet. There must be active exertions for the ingathering of sinners by proclaiming Christ crucified. Take the gospel to them, carry it to their door, put it in their way. Do not suffer them to escape it. Blow the trumpet right against their ears. Now right away people are like, yeah, but who do I go reach? Well, keep in mind... Again, this is a different time now, at the, here at the end. But now we need it more than ever. People need to hear it, the truth more than ever. But this is something you can do. And, and Chad talked about this in his video yesterday. People look at you like you're crazy. But this is something that you can do in your own home. This is something you can do in your friends' network. You can start to make passive mentions of this and see what kind of reaction you get. You know, the things that are happening right now have been talked about in the Bible. But you got to read the Bible and get well-versed in that. But you can tell them, it, it's, it's, you know, this stuff's being talked about in the Bible. This is all really reminiscent of, of uh, the nearing of the tribulation. And so it makes a lot of sense now seeing that stuff. And start to open that door of conversation and bring it out. You know, not pounding on the table yelling at people, per se. Sometimes that's what they need. But more often... Just bringing it up in conversation and getting the conversation going because them, some people do want to talk about it. Like I commented on Chad's video, we may not see the result of what we do now, but those seeds that we plant will grow in the fires of tribulation. How many men saw no result of what they did when they were living, but instead it came after they were gone? Noah is a great example. He didn't get to see the, 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 the fruit of what he did until after, way after. In fact, it's, it's, it's still to this day. A lot of the prophets saw nothing. Isaiah, the Lord literally told him, nobody's going to listen to you, but go tell them anyway. Jeremiah complained, the Lord, they're not listening. The, these men and so many more never saw any result from what they did. But here, all these millennia later, thousands of years later, the fruit is being born. So like I said, we may not see the result of the preaching we do now. In fact, the, the response we get is probably going to be pretty negative. But that's okay because the Lord will bring fruit out of it later. Remember that the true war cry of the church is Gideon's watchword. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. God must do it. It is his own work. But we are not to be idle. Instrumentally, is to be used, the sword of the Lord and, the, and of Gideon. If we only cry the sword of the Lord, we shall be guilty of an idle presumption. And if we shout the sword of Gideon alone, we shall manifest idolatrous reliance on an arm of flesh. We must blend the two in practical harmony, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. We can do nothing of ourselves, but we can do everything by the help of our God. Let us, therefore, 
in his name, determined to go out personally and serve with our flaming torch of holy example and with our trumpet tones of earnest declaration and testimony. And God shall be with us, and Midian shall be put to confusion, and the Lord of hosts shall reign forever and ever. This is a really perfect timing for this because my, my friend is in the hospital now and I know he needs a heart healing. My father's been coming around because of our conversations. He's changing his mind on a lot of things. I don't know who else I'm going to be able to reach. I don't know who else is going to listen, but I'm certainly going to plant seeds where I can, when I can. Now, sometimes it's not always an appropriate time to start talking about those things. Because then you start to push people away. But I'm still going to plant seeds wherever I can. I'm still going to start to engage in these conversations wherever I can. Because if we don't plant seeds, nothing will ever grow. If we don't plant seeds, nothing will ever grow. You can... Do everything to a garden and have it ready to go, but it, and wa even water it twice a day. But if you don't plant any seeds, nothing will ever grow. And like I said, a lot of times you can do this in your very home, in your friends' network. You don't have to go out and beat the streets. I dare say today, though, isn't that, that's needed. Boy, what a, what a sight it would be if 10,000 Christians walked the streets of any city proclaiming the gospel of truth. But what do you see instead? You see the signs of people saying, bring Jesus back, we'll kill him again. I was horrified when I saw that. But I wasn't surprised it was shocking to witness, but I wasn't surprised by it. Because that's the mentality of today. It's the mentality of 2,000 years ago. Nothing has changed. We just were able to travel faster and further. But nothing has changed. So, don't be surprised if you don't see a result. None of the other men in the Bible, very few saw any result from what they were doing for the Lord, witnessed any fruit coming from it. Rarely had anyone convert. There are a few, just a few. But the rest, they didn't see any, didn't see any, any, any good outcome of what they did. And that most of that didn't come until later, way later. Sometimes even a thousand years later, until they saw res until results of what they did came. They were long dead. So don't be surprised if you don't see a result from what you do. It's okay. Because the Lord is going to take care of that. He's going to take that and turn that into something. He's going to bring fruit from those efforts. But we've got to make the effort. Probably going to fail, but at least try. I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. And that's a, a concept that I've shared with other people, and it's really caused them to stop and think. Because they would say, well, you, you failed. Yeah, but I learned. I'd rather try and fail and learn something than never try at all and never learn anything. And people were like, hmm, that's actually a pretty good way of thinking about it. Well, I look at failure differently than most people. Most people are scared to fail. I hope I fail. Because then I can learn from what I did. And the next time it'll make me better. Or I can share that failure with others. And that may help them. So we've been taught to look at things in, a, in the wrong way in a lot of cases. We've got to change our mind on that. Because every person that you preach to that mocks and scoffs at you goes home and thinks about what happened. They think about that interaction. Guilt and conviction starts to set in. Every person. I don't care who they are. And that's a seed planted. Now the Lord will send somebody to water it and then he'll bring in the 
harvest. See, it's all up to him. It's all in his hands. We're just the vessels. We're just the vessels. He does all that work. And it's it's marvelous to witness. Especially when you get to see a person change right in front of you. You can see the process of being of them being born again when it happens right in front of you. And it is is amazing to witness. It is amazing to witness. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for this holy word that you have given us today. It, Father, I have to confess that if we didn't have your complete word here now, things would be much different. This word has been such a blessing to, to be able to go back to it and refer to it. To refer to your words to be able to prove the false doctrines and to be able to prove the true doctrines and to encourage people and lead people into the truth to bring them into the kingdom to bring them into salvation this devotion confirms what we already know but reiterates the point plant seeds spread the word now, nowadays lord and i have to confess a lot of times it's hard to get the conversation started it's hard to even get into that but i pray father that you make more opportunities for us to start to share the truth and you take the fear of sharing it away that it doesn't matter if people mock and scoff it doesn't matter if people ridicule us because many of the, most of the men in the Bible never really saw much result from what they did, if any. But 500 years later, 1,000 years later, 3,000 years later, those, what they did and, and their writings are still bearing fruit. That's amazing. And that's all you. You are doing that. You are bringing that fruit in. That's incredible. That what they did wasn't for vain. It wasn't in vain. It's still producing. See, whenever you do it, it always produces. When we do it, we fail. So, Father, make us more bold in the word. Make us to be more bold into talking about these things. When people ridicule us, why, why are you mocking me? You don't mock the Muslims. You don't mock the Hindus. You only mock the Christians. What does that say about you? Instead, listen to my word and consider it. Think about it. Take it home. Mull it over. See what you come up with. Well, mocking me is not going to help in either either of us. Well, it helps us when they mock us because there's a blessing attached to that. But so, Father, make us bold to share your word and to share the gospel, to to share the truth with people in a in a in a normal way, not pounding a Bible or or, or thumping a Bible or pounding a table but to share it in a normal way, a normal conversation, to, to be evenly minded and to share them this from an intellectual point of view and say, okay, well, there, here's, there, there's stuff here. And it'd be very important for us to address it. Because if we can plant any seed, it's worth it. As we should be planting the seed. Not all of it will grow. Not all of it may start sprouting some of it may come up and go down really quick but you're the one that sends people to water it and you're the one that brings in the increase so let us plant the seed wherever we can make us to plant the seed wherever we can give us more opportunities to be able to share this truth with anybody we can make us more bold or more confident in your word to understand it to help the other people understand it if we can share it with our family, with our friends, anywhere we can. You never know when that one person is going to turn the corner. Something has happened to them, they've been thinking about it, and that's what they need to see or hear in order for them to turn that corner. 
So, Father, make us to bring in fruit for the kingdom. Make us to spread the, this seed. Because we know that in the fires of tribulation, according to your word, many seeds will grow. Many. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace and your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation, for peace, for truth, for justice. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for Morning Devotion. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to have the courage to talk to other people about this stuff. Because nowadays, we don't know enough about it to be able to hold a conversation or even you know, engage in an argument or hold our own against others because they do read that word to, to come up with their arguments. But now's the time to change that. And if we can share it with even one person and get a seed planted and that seed grows, that's something that the Lord has done. If we can even take one person to heaven with us, that's amazing. Because the more people we can save before the tribulation, the better. Because that's not going to be a fun time. And, but if it's the Lord's will that that's when it happens, then that's when it happens. At least the seed got planted. Again, it's not going to be easy. The world doesn't tolerate this stuff very well. But you never know. Somebody in that group that's, that's kind of making fun of you, or maybe even you know passing off some snide remarks or, or comments, Somebody in there is being changed. Because he does some of the most amazing work in some of the most terrible circumstances. So if you have an opportunity, it, share a little bit. I mean, at least whatever you've got, you know, whatever the Lord has, has given you concerning the Word. Share whatever you have. Use it. You can use any of my videos you want. It's, they're all free to share. I don't copyright anything. My whole channel is non-profit and activism. Please share whatever you want and give God the glory because he's doing an amazing work today. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I'll see you in the next video.